Hello everyone, welcome to National Women's History Museum. We're doing Facebook Live today with Andy Oak, who is the author of a fabulous book called Unusual for Their Time on the Road with America's First Ladies. You can get this on Amazon, which is where I got my copy, and a number of other outlets. And we're really excited because this is our July month where we're talking about patriotic ladies and ladies who have made a contribution to their country. And Andy is going to tell us a little bit about how he got into this project. Uh, it was really just a matter of being in the right time, yeah. at the right place at the right time. Uh, I was one of the producers for C-SPAN's First Ladies Influence and Image. I ended up to be the only traveling producer that went to every home, library, church, school, museum, mm -hmm. train station for every First Lady, yeah. Martha Washington to Michelle Obama, and now I'm continuing that journey and that adventure, expanding my research, mm -hmm. expanding my travel, expanding my First Ladies, mm -hmm. now that we have Melania Trump yeah. in the White House, and it's a very exciting project. I have Volume 2 coming out later this year in November. Signed copies are available at firstladiesman.com and a n number of other places where you mentioned. That's terrific. It's great to be here with you. All right, so we're going to play a game today. Okay. Because we like playing games. And we have uh, seven different categories associated with First Ladies. So I'm going to ask you to spin the wheel, and I'm going to ask you a question based on where it lands. And in order to spin the wheel, I'm just going to ask you to snap your fingers. Okay, we ready okay. to go? Go ahead. <laughs> this is so great. Category Oof. is separate careers. All right. Are you ready? Yes, I am. And here's the question. Do I have phone a friend or buy a clue or any? This is just all me. Nope, I'll give you, I'll give you hints. <laughs> Who was the first first lady to maintain her career after marriage? The... the, the the first first lady I know of that had an actual career of any kind is Abigail Fillmore. Ding, 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 and, 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 and libraries and things like that. Of course, okay. you've got the bushes and things. Yeah. But um, uh, a lit first lady that people don't even know her name, Eliza Johnson, mm -hmm. taught Andrew Johnson how to read in mm -hmm. his tailor shop in Greenville, Tennessee. He was this great orator and this great sort of character, but people would come from miles just to hear him talk, but he couldn't read or write. She taught him how to read and write at night there in the tailor shop. Okay. So, so Abigail Fillmore is the first lady, I think, in... 1840s or 50s. So she's 19th century. It could, yeah. yeah. Oh no, absolutely, absolutely. So she's very early. Like, what does it mean for first ladies in general to have a separate career? You know, it's it's very interesting, and and even more so in mm -hmm. modern times. Yeah. Uh, you think about, and we could get this at looking yeah. at some of the other categories, yeah. but the majority of our first ladies from Pat Nixon on have had uh, postgraduate degrees, mm -hmm. and 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 careers of their own. You look at the past number of Michelle Obama, right. Hillary Clinton, uh, Laura Bush, you know, mm -hmm. all these people, were, they're not the traditional first ladies of, of yesterday right. that, that, that did mm -hmm. the, these more, you know, stayed at home more and things like that and ran the manors or the estates. So when they have this, they bring a whole new level of experience, a whole new level of education, a whole new level of causes, philanthropies, and focuses that can really help expand the policy of their husband's administration. Mm -hmm. So having this coming into the position with some kind of a, of a world view or sort mm -hmm. of a bigger perspective can be very helpful, I think. I, it, it, like it can be. And, and first lady. It, it's, mm -hmm. it, it's very interesting. And, and it's also very interesting how Hillary Clinton took her education and her experience and turned it into that kind of policy work and how Michelle Obama didn't. Now we also see she Michelle Obama took a very traditional role. Mm -hmm. She did, you know, uh, let's let's get let's get moving and children right. obesity and took a ch children's causes and and health and things like that. And had Hillary won the presidency, you could say what she did politically is how she got to be president. 
but she didn't win, and you can say because politics is a very, very tooth and nail, dirty, dirty business, rough and tumble, and you could say for what she did and used her experiences and stuff is why she didn't get elected, because she made enemies, political enemies, as it's, it's nearly impossible to be in politics and not have enemies not and detractors. I, well, so let's go on to the next category, because that may be one of the things we can talk about. It could so, be, absolutely. Go ahead, spin the wheel. You're so good at this. <laughs> Oh, public public criticism. criticism. They're it on. We already, we've already, it's, it's, it's so, it's so neat the way they all intertwine, though. I yeah. mean, you know, you can really just. Okay, ready? Yeah, the envelope, please. There we go. I really ripped that one to shreds. Public criticism. This is one of my favorites. Which presidential spouse was excoriated by the opposition party as the equivalent of an unrefined, pipe-smoking, backwoods, bigamist, hillbilly mountain woman? Uh, that would be Rachel Jackson. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Jackson's wife, who technically was never a first lady. She died a month before mm -hmm. he was inaugurated. And if you read the last letter before her death, as she is there dying at the Hermitage in Nashville, Andrew Jackson is writing to a friend and saying that the public scorn and the things that the uh, mm -hmm. John Quincy Adams campaign machine yes. said about her. Um, the, the, the unfortunate thing for Rachel Jackson is that most of that was true. Uh, you could spin it to, to say that. Uh, yeah. She was from the country. So right. when people said she's a hillbilly, you know, right. people called Lucy Hayes a hillbilly because she was from Ohio. I mean, we hadn't gone west of the Mississippi right. by this time. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a lot of that kind of stuff. It, it was an unusual in the sense that you wouldn't expect, and it was not publicly acceptable to attack a woman like this, mm -hmm. especially in the press. Um, and John Quincy Adams, very similar to what we deal with today, he said, well, I, I didn't do it. I didn't say it. But his team did. His people did. Um, Rachel Jackson was older. Um, she was not a, 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 a terribly young or particularly stunningly attractive mm -hmm. woman, which, which was unfortunate that people said the things she did. She wasn't unattractive by any stretch of the imagination, but she was an older woman. Um, you know, Martha Washington type of, of thing. And so uh, she was married to a horrible man. Uh, Mr. Robards, I believe his last name was. So now I, I tell people this is like, think about people trying to get a divorce today. Yes. It can be messy. Think about in the 1800s in the mountains of Tennessee, and you're married to an abusive alcoholic man who won't even answer his door. There's no phones, there's no electricity. You can't, how do you get in touch with this man? So she basically left her first husband, moved back to the boarding house that her mom ran, and met Andrew Jackson, one of two orphan presidents. The other is uh, Herbert Hoover. Oh. And um, uh, uh, so Jackson was living at this boarding house. They fell in love and got married. And whether she was divorced at the time or not, or what, I mean, it really, in my opinion, doesn't matter. She left an abusive situation. Mm -hmm. She bettered herself in life and fell in love with a decent man who loved her and they had a wonderful life together. And then when she got in politics, they used it against her. Mm -hmm. She did smoke a pipe, but you could go to Georgetown right now and find women smoking cigars at bars. And right. they say she was a horseback rider. Well, the next first lady, who wasn't really a first lady, it was Martin Van Buren's uh, daughter-in-law, they called her an accomplished equestrian. That's the same as a horseback rider, but she was young and attractive, and they liked her in the press. So I think Rachel Jackson really, really got a raw deal. So what is it like for some of these first ladies to, to be brought into the situation that's maybe not of their choosing and then to find themselves ripped to, to shreds by the opposition? It, it, it really is. It, it, it's, gotten, it's gotten worse, as mm -hmm. we've seen in, the, in this past campaign. I, I do say, people say, you know, that the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that the, uh, the, the most recent campaign was the worst in history. I said, well, mm -hmm. no one died because Rachel Jackson had a heart attack caused by stress, caused by what we did. But, Imagine if you were followed around every single day and scrutinized for everything you did in the press, in the paper. The, the first lady is not elected and she's not paid. We cannot tell her what to do. There's just, you can't. And beyond that, even if you did pay or elect or say, could you tell a woman how to be a mother? Could you tell someone how to be a parent? Mm -hmm. If, if just the, what they were doing didn't agree with your political thoughts of things. So they are under an additional scrutiny. Not only do these women have to be married to the most, arguably the most powerful man in the world, one of the most powerful men in the world, but they have this influence. 
Their children are in the, what, what, what these women have done over time to keep their children out of the press mm -hmm. and, and give them some semblance of a normal life is n no short of an astronomical feat on top of supporting their husband, who is one of the most powerful men in the world. I, I, would, I would go out and say that being first lady is arguably a harder job than the president because the president doesn't get as much flack if he's a bad father, bad, you know, because right. it's like, well, he's not playing baseball with his son. Well, what's the mother doing? You know, he's right. running the world. Right. He can't right. be a dad. Well, the, the first lady's right there with him, so and it's a tougher role. Yeah. And so it's a partnership. A 100%. Yeah. 100%. Right. Well, and that could be one of the next categories. Do you want to spin the wheel again? Look at that. I could do that in my sleep. This is fun. I could do this all day. Entertaining. Entertaining. Entertaining is always an entertaining subject. All right. That's, that's a little, got a little tangent there, but that's okay. There we go. Entertaining. Which first lady was the first to purchase official White House China? Ah, this, ah, this is such a great topic. Uh, the first official White House China was um, Elizabeth Monroe. Yes. Yes. There it is. That's correct. All right. Um, it's funny because you think about in modern times, um, I, I was, I'm was i old enough to know that Nancy Reagan got a lot of grief over White House she China. Did? Yeah, in fact, I was telling some of our younger staff members about that and they could hardly believe it. Right. Well, <laughs> it, you know, it's it's so funny. It, it, I'll tell you one thing that this, yeah. this whole project has taught me mm -hmm. is that Americans have short-term memories. We are very, very fickle. Uh -huh. And when you get a bunch of us in a room together, we can just tear someone to shreds. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, if Nancy Reagan didn't have New China, she right. would have been torn apart because what are you serving on? Why would you right. bring someone in? But almost every administration from mm -hmm. the Monroe administration on mm -hmm. has had White House China. Now, there are administrations that don't have uh, official China and use other people's because mm -hmm. in times of depression or yeah. war or their spendthrifts right. and things like that. But when Nancy Reagan got that grief for that China, it turns out that, number one, it wasn't taxpayer dollars that paid for it. It was mm -hmm. the Reagan's rich friends in Hollywood, right. which, if you think in recent elections with the Trumps, with the Obamas, right. with the, the Clintons and everyone, you know, they're going to $10,000 a plate Hollywood dinners and the stars are coming out and doing right. all their stuff. So, you know, it, it, it's very interesting. Entertaining right. is a huge, huge part of, of First Lady. And not just like, what the menu is or what dress to wear it is, but to a certain extent it is. It is a, the, the level of diplomats that come mm -hmm. to the White House to basically represent, the White House represents America. And if you're not putting your best foot forward with a meal, with the menu, thinking about every single detail, that if there's a color that might be offensive to some leader from another country for some unknown reason, you have to know the protocol for every, you have to have bases covered that you didn't even know existed. And these women do it now with staffs, but before, like when Sarah Polk was entertaining, they would have 16 course meals served on multiple uh, sets of china and things, just extravagant, extravagant, I mean, you know, dinner parties for, for hundreds of people that have to go flawlessly or you can create an international affair. Scandal. Scandal. Okay. Controversy. Whatever. And you know, I think it's interesting, one of the things that you talk about in your book is how Dolly Madison is there for this very lengthy period of time, not per se as a, as a first lady, but then almost as sort of like the first lady uh, advisor, mentor she, to she was. first lady. Well, and right. she, she was a first lady yeah. before she was first lady. Right. Um, Madison okay. was, um, uh, was, was Jefferson's uh, um, uh, Secretary of State, and Jefferson well, his White House was kind of like a hunting lodge. Right. Uh, people said that Jefferson used to just answer the door in his long johns and stuff. <laughs> Women didn't want to go. He had, you know, stuffed animals, all not like teddy bear stuffed animals, like giant grizzly bears and things from all the Lewis Clark expeditions. Oh, yeah. it, it was not, it was not a, it was not an inviting White House for the the right. gentler mm -hmm. fe female of, of the right. day. So so they would go across town to Dolly Madison's house because she knew how to entertain and. Her story is just so amazing because she came from such humble beginnings that to think that a first lady that would mm -hmm. set the tone and be this grand dame and this advisor to mm -hmm. first ladies to come, she never left the country. And she was from 
Greensboro, North Carolina, or outside of Green, when it was a British colony, and then moved to Pennsylvania with her dad, who couldn't do mm -hmm. much right and, and was just trying to find his way. They joined the Quaker community and then got mm -hmm. drummed out of that because that didn't fit him. And her first husband died during the yellow mm -hmm. fever ec epidemic in mm -hmm. uh, uh, Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And then she met Monroe, and she walks in the house that she was first married in, this humble apron wearing school marm almost and walks out in a turban to become one of the most elegant and, and politically minded first ladies in the history of our country. And she was around for a long time. Oh, there lived a very long time. Yes, 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 first ladies, which I found well, really interesting. What I mentioned before, yeah. uh, Van Buren's daughter in law, yeah. uh, Angelica Singleton Van Buren, is Dolly Madison's cousin. Mm -hmm. And the only way she met the president's son to yeah. become or the president's daughter-in-law, is because she was husband hunting. Her family sent her up to Washington, which happened a lot. Right. They would send these, right. these older mm -hmm. girls, daughters, up to Washington, find a senator, find a lawyer, find a man with a good job they can right. provide. And Dolly Madison said, well, let's go over to this party that I'm invited to. Well, the party's at the White House, and she's meeting the president's son, and they yes. fall in love. But Dolly Madison had mm -hmm. so much, in, probably more influence, either indirectly or directly, by just simple relations like that, uh, than, than any other first lady in history, because she did live so long. Okay. And she's been a pattern, I think, for or someone that first ladies can look up to. And I see that we have actually gotten to the end of our time today. So I want to make sure that I thank everyone who's tuned in for our Facebook Live with National Women's History Museum. I'm with Andy Oak, who is the author of Unusual for Their Time, On the Road with America's First Ladies. We are going to put links to our website in the comments section here on Facebook, so please come to our website so you can watch the video later, but also take your very own version of the First Lady's Quiz, which is currently embedded on our site. And uh, you have another volume coming out? Volume 2, the first the first draft okay. has been done. Right. I'm working through the edits, working okay. with the publisher for a new book cover, which will be similar, similar. but we'll have right. that out in time for the holidays. It'll be out in November. Well, I think we may have to have you come back then. Because, Any and every time. Because in November, we will also be uh, debuting our own First Ladies project in time for the holiday season. I oh, so would love to be a part of it. We'll love the you work you guys are doing. And tell here. us about the more recent ladies. For sure. Thank you for so sure. much. Thank you All very right. much. And Wonderful to be here. Thank you, everyone.